Okay, so I'm late. <laughs> but by just a tick, plus a couple of minutes over there. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bradley McAllister, founder of Spirocraft, and this is Spirocraft Live on a wonderful Thursday afternoon. And all I needed was for the chat column program to work like it's supposed to. And uh, <laughs> you about gave up on me, Rich. Don't do that. And... I kicked on everything after I had the chat column up where I'm watching Rich over there. And that page kicked up and I typed in good afternoon. And then when I hit turned on the stream, it said, oops, something went wrong. Reload the chat. And so I had to reload that whole page on a vintage laptop. And that's what I was waiting for. But I made it. I slid in. I'll have to see the intro on the replay. Um, I did make it. Rich, I'm glad you didn't leave. Um, it's a good thing. Uh, I'd hate to be the only one here on a Thursday afternoon. Actually, you're kind of lucky you got me because it's like 70 degrees and no humidity in South Georgia. And I really didn't want to come to work. <laughs> but I did, and I'm here, and it's going to be fun. We're going to make a little bowl today. And um, all that good stuff. So... Rich, you been up to anything good? We missed you last week, speaking of being late. I hope you're doing well. It looks like, uh, I think they, things look a little crooked there, but not too bad. Uh, tell me if the sound is coming through and all the good things like it's supposed to. It should be doing what it's supposed to be doing. I've got the YouTube feed on over there. Rich, I'm still waiting for the Nebula logos to go on this side of the headstock. Over the weekend and last week during the uh, interactive live ones, I was turning the headstock around uh, while I was talking to folks before I um, started turning anything so they could see the, the Nebula badging. Hey, Lee. Good to hear from you to see that you can hear me. That's a good deal. I'm going to get a sip of water here real quick. Rich must have disappeared, but he'll be back. Hope you're doing well there, Lee. We're going to... The, the piece of resin that I cast on Sunday, that I mixed the resins on Sunday, um, I changed my plan a little bit on what the cast was. Because I, I, we were at about an hour on the resin and about, what was it, 85, upper 80s, low 90s on the temperature. And I was going to, I thought, I said to myself, well, I'll come back out here and cast it. And um, then I realized that I had somewhere I had to go and I wouldn't be here when that close to two hour time window came up. <laughs> it may be GA moonshine. Um, so I went ahead and cast it. At just right after I signed off and I got if you saw the pictures this piece is pretty cool uh, color wise and I'll have to do it down there um, I've got to focus for for higher up for being sideways but I like the way the colors came out considering you know that it had literally almost another hour to uh, sit in uh, the mold and the biggest thing that's different that I did Pop myself back up here is I didn't put it in the pressure pot So I decided I'd do an experiment and here's the mold bowl uh, That it was in and I wanted to measure this if I haven't lost track of my tape measure, which I probably have I Can never keep track of tape measures in here no matter what I do they seem to go somewhere else. But nonetheless, I'm going to guess that's about two and a half inches deep. Okay? So two and a half inches deep and about uh, maybe eight inches wide. And mold released on it. But I didn't put it in a pressure pot at all. I literally just set it on the counter here and let it sit. Um, so there's a couple of interesting things, uh, you know, about doing that. I get that question a lot, and that's why I decided to do this, was do you have to have a pressure pot to cast resin? And without being a smart aleck, as I've always said, the answer is maybe, depending on what you're doing. 
it, had I done a big tall cup like I had talked about, then the answer would be yes. Um, you would need a pressure pot because you would have the depth that the bubbles that were at the bottom might not have the opportunity to get all the way to the top. And with this piece only being two and a half inches thick overall, the chances of having the bubbles, especially with an hour left of open time, uh, but in the mold, the chances of having any bubbles not get to the top are pretty thin. We'll find out today when we turn this if there's any bubbles inside it or not. Um, also, it was strictly resin and, and pearl powder. There was no wood in there. There was nothing else to hold, uh, hold a bubble, if you will. If you've got anything else submerged or mixed into that piece of resin, um, you run a pretty good chance of having a bubble hiding underneath it somewhere. Uh, so in this case, it was straight pure resin, and I should be able to get away with it without too much trouble or any trouble realistically. Uh, one thing that is kind of interesting, because it wasn't in a mold, and I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm going to turn it back uh, on its side here. If you can see, so here's the very edge of the mold, the sharp line. And then you see these little, this little indentation. The center, <laughs> you heard your names a few times. No worries, Rich. Um, one, I was giving you a hard time for not being here uh, last week and things like that. And uh, something else, I can't remember what it was now. Oh, that I still need the logos on, to put on the front side of the headstock. That during the live interactives, I had it turned around uh, until I turned to where you could see the Nova Nebula logos and all that. So I remember we had talked, you guys were going to try and come up with some logos down there that we could put on this side uh, for Spirocraft so you always saw that it was a Nova Nebula. That's what I was calling you about. Um, so this resin in the middle actually rose up a little bit because uh, <coughs> it wasn't in a pressure pot. Typically, if it was in a pot, it would have been right down level and smooth and flat. So that's one <coughs> big thing that I did kind of notice it's different. All right. Um, the bottom color, I poured the bottom solid with the, the least of the nice colors. I'm going to grab the colors here real quick. So that was the one color that just, it was white, and then I put like copper and stuff in it, and it wasn't all that attractive. So I poured that into the bottom uh, first. And then I worked to back and forth with the blue and the gold. And when I walked away from it, it was in kind of a striped, stri striated pattern, if you will. And so this is what happens. And now it's a pretty cool pattern, but that gave it about an hour to start to morph together uh, into one, to try to be one homogeneous color. But we still got interesting delineation without it being real sharp and crisp. Not a bad mix at all. Uh, had I waited until it was 135 and put it in, it would have been just exactly like I had done it because it would have, it would have gelled within a few minutes. Uh, yeah, that would be cool if they can find any stickers, Rich. Um, if you know if they can down there. Well, we want people to know that this is a nebula that we're turning on here all day long. So uh, the one thing I'm going to do today to start with is I'm going to mount this in a set of big bowl jaws, you know, jumbo jaws, and, and reverse it to put a tenon on the bottom side. And, and then we will commence to turning the bowl and then we'll sand it uh, with an uh, endosta sandpaper and we'll use the Yorkshire grit and, and uh, put a little finish on it there. Okay? So, let me grab a chuck here. I have an easy chuck that I was going to put the jaws on. I didn't get in here till about 12.30, so I didn't quite get everything set up. That will be my excuse. Those of you who know me know that no matter how early I get in here, there's always something that I didn't do or get done in time. Or when I do get something, everything done, I think, on time, in time, ahead of time, then something goes wrong. And we're going to have to adjust these buttons. Get in there. Yeah, we got a little adjusting to do. Looks like 
Let's see, because we're slightly out. Let's go all the way in. And I'm just kind of lining this, taking an eyeball on this, on the holes. To see which ones will, will grab it. It's not, it appears to be not perfectly round, which is not surprising. So I think I'll go on row three, and we'll see how that does. So sometimes using these kind of jaws, you can check it with two bumpers, but then what happens if your piece isn't perfectly round, like this one looks like it's a little oval, um, it'll fool you, and you'll end up having to go in another row or so. I'll do four of them, and we'll check it there and see if we think we're going to get the grab that we need. Do, 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 do. It is such a nice day here in the south. I really was tempted, but, but I wouldn't let, let you all down. This is hammock weather. We don't get hammock weather here in South Georgia very often. And if we have it, it doesn't stay for long, that's for sure. So I spun that open a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine there. Okay. So we'll finish this off, moving these all in. Art's not here today to tell me that they have to be yellow, black, yellow, black, for sure. I keep swearing that I'm going to get uh, a, dr a driver for this in my drill to make this faster. I keep swearing, but I don't ever do it. Did I get them all? I think I got them all. There we go. Loaded in there nicely. You know, it's a little, you know, funky because it, um, the edge here, the edge doesn't touch because the center is raised up. All right. And let's see what we should do here. Let's see if we, which overlay we like. Let's, let's go here and there. And that should cover the action. I think most of what we're going to want to see today is from the end. And I'm just squeezing those up a little bit more. And we'll put this at a slow speed just to get it set. We don't trust it 100%. So I'll true it up a little bit and then we'll put the tendon on there. Or actually not a tendon. I'm going to make a mortise again today. Now it does look like I could actually where it's because of where it's sitting I could lower that camera down so I've left my controls out here except I had to go get the mouse 
And I think we'll lower that camera down after all, just a little bit. So I'll pop you to the overhead. And then I'll go into my controls here. I'm still working on using these controls out here. There we go. I think that looks a little better. Oh, I need to reverse it. I want, uh, yeah, no, that's what I want. Correct. Hey, my dad's here. How you doing, dad? Good to see you. We're playing with resin today. A resin bowl that was cast without being put in the pressure pot. So we're going to clean it up a little bit on the back side and make a recess. Turn it around. And we, we'll go 750 on this. We don't want to go over 800 with these jaws. Okay. Find a face mask. Using a Easywood Tools Mini. <laughs> not, not the micro, but the mini. Uh, finishing tool with the negative rake CI3 on it. I need to raise it up a good bit. Dad, if your weather is as nice as mine, you should be laying out in the hammock right now. Just want to get everything uniform. Getting out a fresh brush to take the streamers off of there. That center is going to be the recess, so we're not going to worry about that too much. Okay. That looks pretty flat. Let's take, go ahead and take the corner off while we're here. So even though they're urethane bumpers, I don't want to like run into them hard there. And you can see some of our pattern is starting to show up from what we did inside. Cool beans, Rich. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Look at this great, look at this great uh, swirl we got here. I'm going to open up some denatured alcohol. To show you what we're getting that was hiding underneath that just kind of basic brown that was on the first layer.
Now that, that looks like something out of the 60s groovy kind of pattern. Rich, do you know if there's many people other than myself and Jake that are streaming on a Nebula yet? Are there very many others that are doing this on a regular basis? I know Jake is. Okay. It's easier to smooth this up as much as I can while it's turned around. Yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking. I'll bet he'd love a set of stickers too. Help, help everybody out. We just need the boat to show up. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Let's go ahead and make it, make our recess in here. Again, I still, I can't honestly say that I looked for them until just a little while ago. Can't find my inside calipers that match my black outside calipers. So that's my bad. Looks like about that red red circle right there. And that's pretty much right on the money. And I'll go just a fuzz bigger than that because I made the chuck tight, tight on that. This is actually the CI4 uh, negative rate cutter. Sometimes I use the CI7, which is the really pointy one, but it can be kind of grabby. I'm gonna go just a little bit bigger there. Okay. I always like that sound when you go into the middle, right to the center. These projects are good for me personally because, like I said, if, um, if you've been around a while with me, I don't. I in the past I didn't normally do much in the way of recesses. I was always a tenon guy, but I'm I'm starting to do them more, I'm getting more comfortable with them, and it's perfect for these resin pieces because when you're finished, you're finished. You don't have to go mess around with getting rid of the tenon. Start to cut the dovetail into it. And then I'll sweep across. Now that's a little big, so I may have to switch over here. Let's switch over to the radius, because they don't have a square one yet. Kind of flatten that corner out. Let's see how we're doing in there. Okay, a little bit more down in there. I'm probably not going to have the tailstock up. I can get it out of the way enough. Because I don't have a negative rake on a mini. 
see if I can get this mid-size to reach in here now. I just want to clean out that bottom corner of my dovetail so my jaw sit in there properly. So there I sweep across now. And just because I haven't done a ton, ton of ton of, of uh, recesses, I want to check it and make sure that I didn't make it too deep because I can fix it now if I did. Looks like it lifts up okay. All right, good deal. I think we'll be fine. All right, so there's not much more I can do up in here because of my bumpers. Um, I will try and, and blend this across as much as I can when I turn it around. I don't have a problem having the shape. I just have to remember when I'm working on the inside that I have that profile going on in there so that I don't come through the wall. So we'll pop back up here like so. Do -do -do -do. That is some cool looking resin. Yeah, Rich, one of the nice things, uh, I, I just sold one of the, the two nebulas I got on the way in um, to a customer. She said that, that what uh, pushed her over the top or helped her decide to buy it was my un unboxing, uh, unpacking video. She said she enjoyed that a lot, and that was what made her make her decision. I said, good. That's all good. It means it's important to do an unpacking video on a new product. So this is the Supernova 2. Chuck. You put it right up in there. Make sure it looks relatively true. Not, not too bad. little out of true on the top, but we knew that. The bottom down here, though, looks good. All right. Get back over there. Controllers. So we'll just make sure that everything is hunky-dory here. See, so the one thing about a recess is if you don't leave enough material... Uh, you can break them, and that's where I don't have a lot of experience. I know that I can squeeze the fool out of a tenon. I can still break them. Um, but a recess, I'm still getting that comfort zone, having not used them a lot. Now, I got plenty of material there, uh, assuming it, that I don't have any voids or any craziness going on in here. Okay. All right. So, back to... End shot. And now we're going to dial her up to a thousand twenty. Confirm. And I'm gonna grab a quick sip of water. And what I think I'll do today, for sake of time, is we'll turn the inside 
um, finish up some of the outside but I'll sand the inside and we'll polish that I probably won't do both sides of it uh, just because of time because if you've seen one side polished and sand sanded and polished you you know what the, the what it's all about you don't need to watch somebody probably do the other side okay so let's take the corner off of this first And I'll just run down the side and make sure that it's uh, true, it's round. They couldn't get to this area. When it was in the jaws. And so we pretty much touched there, okay. Good deal. And now we head inside. Inside we go. We're right at the center. This is where it's bumpy. And you see it's dead smooth in here. But out on the outer edge, it's it's where it, it, it was bumpy. Now, you know, I've, I've done these demonstrations before where I showed about doing a double bowl. Got great cotton candy colors here. Uh, but this one's so small, I don't know. I mean, you would save some resin, yeah. And it would save you this little extra bit of turning. But this is not a lot. And so right now I have a mini uh, Easy Wood Tools with a negative rate. I have a, I have a midsize over here, but I don't think it's got the negative rake on it. It actually does. So either of these tools, either the mini or the midsize, the midsize is my is my preferred choice generally for the size of a tool. I, I just kind of like this size tool as the one I've worked with the most. I like the mini for, for smaller things, but on this, I don't mind having a little more handle. So I'll go with the, the midsize after all. I can stand a little further away so I don't get quite as much stream on me. With the mid-sized tool. Let's see what that resin looks like in the middle. We'll stop off and just to look. Oh, look at that. And that's the, that's the real crime uh, with resin is you get a pattern like that and you turn it away. It makes you cry because you can't save it. That is like a cool octopus sunburst kind of looking thing. Jellyfish. And we're going to turn most of it away. Hopefully it stays cool going on down in there. That's why I prefer my double bowl method. I, I don't really throw much away on those. And so I don't feel bad about turning away a, a really cool pattern because I've had it happen where you've got a really nice pattern out here now and then when you get to where you're going, it's all gone. And one thing I need to stop and decide here is if I want to do anything much with this profile and make it, you know, I kind of don't, I don't mind having the rim there, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of this away before I get committed on the inside here. 
So I'm going to flip flop the cameras for a moment. Art Miller, I was talking about you a little while ago. Were your ears burning? I hope you're doing well, sir. Just kind of taking some of that OG out of it. I got some great cotton candy over here. All right. So a little bit more right there, and then I will switch actually on the back side here to a radius cutter and we'll just clean this whole back side up and be done with it. And I want to drop a little further into the groove back there. So I'm going to switch all the way over to the little micro with a CI5. Try not to hit the chuck jaws. I don't really feel like raising the tool wrist just for that shot. That let me reach in there a little bit further. Beautiful day on the Jersey Shore. It's a beautiful day here in South Georgia too, Art. I was telling the folks I almost didn't show up because it's such a nice day. It was really hard to come in here to work. Right up against the chuck jaws, that was the jaw, so that cutter gets to get rotated before too terrible long. Okay. All right, and I'll take the radius cutter and clean up. This is the negative rate radius CI2. They don't make a square one, which I wish they would for certain things like making tendons and one thing and another. But this radius one will allow us to clean up all the tool marks on the back back here. Again, we'll do our best not to stick it into the chuck jaw. And I'm actually using the, the leading edge a little bit just to kind of make this more uniform and that's okay. And then I go into the center. And that's pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Maybe one more pass. It's, it's quite smooth. A little bit of two mark right out here on the very edge. There's a line that's too close to the jaws, I think, for me to get. Although I'll try just because. That's as close as I can get. Come right across here again, and I had some tube marks right up there on the very end. And that backside is ready to sand and polish. Yep, that's real nice right in the middle there. Okay, back to the front. So now I, I'm, I know exactly what my shape is so that I can follow along. So we'll flip flop these cameras. Back to that. Reminds me of Aquarius, the song Aquarius or whatever from the 60s and the clothes that would go with it. And all that good stuff. I'll lower that down just a fuzz. Uh, 
Okay, off we go. We can go from the inside out or the outside in, doesn't technically matter, except that resin does tend to flex. So let's work from our smallest area to our largest area so we don't have to come back up here. So that way we're keeping more mass back behind, down below. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm here and I'm looking just over the back side while the tool's cutting. So I'm looking at the back side uh, to see my thickness. Okay, I'm not worried about this guy flying apart. Age of Aquarius, there you go. You gotta remember, I wasn't very old in the age of Aquarius. Even if I have a gray beard, I wasn't that old in the age of Aquarius. Now we've got some funny sounding resin right there. Let's see if anything's going on. No? Maybe just me rolling the tool a little bit. Keep the ribbons away so you can see what you got going on. Now one thing I have to keep in mind because recesses are new to me somewhat, you know, I've got a recess that's three-eighths of an inch up into here. So I'm not going to go a million miles down in. This just needs to be big enough to hold M&Ms or whatever your favorite snack is. Last thing I want to do is make a donut here today. And you can see we've gotten some nice colors here in our ribbons. We have blue and white. We have kind of pinkish brown and white. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it, Jeff? All right. A little bit more in here. See how that feels across there. Feels pretty good. My center is still just a little teeny bit high compared to everything else. Let's see if my mini cutter might happen to be a little sharper and give me a little bit better finish. And I'll slow the feed rate down. I think that cutter's in a little better shape. So I got a, a divot right there, and then we go across. The question is, can we do this with a radius cutter and not drag the corners? Is, I, the answer looks like yes. So we'll try, we'll try using the radius cutter to clean this up. And if I touch with the corner behind, I make a mark. Um, 
and that's you know that I don't want to do. So I, I don't mind if I lead with the front edge to cut a little extra or work to the middle, but I don't want to drag, I don't want to make a mistake and be dragging the back edge, uh, if you will. Oh, be fearless, Jeff. Be fearless and get back into resin. Pretty good. So the question is right here. Can I take out that one little divot without dragging the back corner? And the answer is yes. There was a little groove there from the round tool. And so now we're literally sanding without paper. We're just trying to get all as many ridges out and tool marks as possible. Because the less we have to sand, the better our life is. Um, so most, doing the most resin, raw wood, or segmenting. Well, I, I don't do segmented pieces, or I haven't done segmented pieces, Jeff, so that one doesn't enter into my equation. Uh, and then it would be a toss-up between just... Uh, the resin or straight wood just depends on my mood that day okay I think I think we're done turning on that I think we can do a little sanding and polish it and we will have our cool looking thing. See, is that cool or what? I think that's pretty cool. Love the colors. Love everything about it. All right. Let's get set up for a little sanding. Nobody likes to sand, but we got to do it a little bit, and then we'll polish it. Let's hope that I actually still have my drill in here. I carry it back and forth between all the different shops so much that I'm never sure where I have it hidden. And if I don't have it here, we'll just do it with the pad and by hand. I'm not seeing it on first look. I see the mandrel. I don't see the drill. So we'll just do this by hand. Shouldn't be too big a deal. Got a number of grits here. This will sand up pretty quick, I do believe, for what we're doing. I'm going to turn the speed back down to around 500. And I'm going to put it in reverse. I like to sand in reverse. And I, I'm going to do this dry, not wet. I like your cool symbol there, Jeff. Kind of get some papers arranged here. That one looks pretty beat. This paper lasts a long, long time.
240, 280, there's a 500. This is probably 100. And I want to find the, the marks, the lines. So see that big white line that jumped up there? We'll roll right around that corner out right there. So the paper actually made it rougher uh, technically than it was from the tool, but I wanted to flatten things out a little bit. Let me grab a course in between what I've got laying here. Run over to my sandpaper box. I've got a special sandpaper box I'm going to hang on the wall here real soon. I just haven't gotten to it, imagine that. That's what I was hunting for. Okay. And also remember that we're going to be using the Yorkshire grit going through this. So that will do a lot of the work for us. I, I believe that other piece wasn't marked, but I believe it was 180. Or 100, excuse me. This is 180. I've got a fan blowing so at least it blows the resin away from me where I'm not breathing it and I have an overhead fan for this building one of the jet air dust collectors that I need to install to keep this stuff that's why I don't like to sand in here much I keep it off the, trying to keep it off the cameras and all this little edge has got kind of an attitude That was 180. We'll do 220. Work our way through the grits. The less grits you skip, the better off you are. And I love Endosa because it has like it increments of 20 in the red line. So you took 220, 200, 220, 240, 280, 260, 280, stuff like that. Is you, your your goal in sanding is to get rid of the scratch marks from the grit before.
All right. Chugging right along. I know nobody likes to watch sanding, me included. At 240. Do I have a fresh 240? I do. Let's go with that. And then the Yorkshire grit, when we end up with the microfine, we should have a wonderful finish on here. If I had to be truthful, my favorite finish is lacquer. Because you can sand to about 220 and then fill any, anything with the lacquer. And you get a nice high gloss and you fill with the lacquer and you cut the lacquer back. So it's interesting, up on this rim up here, uh, that was 220 before, and it was still trying to rough up that rim because it's uh, so thin, I guess. And now with the 240, it, uh, it quit doing that. Now this would be better if I was using my disc, my sander, because it would be spinning all around. And a random orbital sander is even better. Here's 280. Watch me finish just and find my drill in here. But again, I am using a foam pad so my fingers don't make any grooves or anything like that. Work that rim. All right, two eighty. And we'll go to three twenty and we'll stop at three twenty and switch over to paste. See what kind of finish we get. They usually recommend 400 to 600, but we're gonna stop short of that today just because uh, you don't wanna sit here and watch me sand all day. And I don't wanna sit here and sand all day. And I keep turning it over, turning the pad over. You would have had time to send all the way if you weren't late. <laughs> Easy now, Rich. At least I showed up. I wasn't late. I was here. The stream was late. The stream was late. <laughs> Blame it on Restream and their chat platform. I know you just like to bust my chops. Just remember it'd be about three weeks. And I'll be standing across the aisle from you. For about five days. Could be a long five days, my friend. If you're getting there on Wednesday. I don't know. High up as you are, you probably don't have to show up and set up. You're not going to AEW. Not at all. True story? Or are you just pulling my chain? Oh, oh well, that stinks. Gonna miss you.
Jackie knows that's the only time of year you get off the leash. <laughs> so to speak. Then you go into bike week. Okay, well, I guess you've got... That would be a good priority, too. I can't, I can't disamount on bike week. Anywhere. All right, Yorkshire Grit Original Paste. Everything, of course, I'm using today is Spirocraft stocks. We stock the resin, we stock the sandpaper, we stock the Easy Wood tools, we stock the Yorkshire Grit. I was busy, busy, busy with the sale last week. And then I'm still playing catch up on it. Sounds good, Rich. All right, I'm going to go in reverse and uh, start working with the Yorkshire Grit Original. I'm going to fold this up a little bit. Again, still turn in 500. 496, 499 with my hand on it. I loaded it first when it wasn't spinning. And then I'll go ahead and put some more. I put more on while it's spinning. The Orchard Grid is a combination of abrasive paste and a little bit of waxes here and there. It does a fantastic job. And depending on how much time you've got, the more you use it, the smoother you will get. I'm going to turn that speed up some now to about 700. Interesting how that blue on the edge got much darker as, as the sheen came to it. And now I'll take a clean paper towel and take off the excess. Always use paper towels. Don't use cotton t-shirts. You'll get hurt one day. If your piece is thick, you can, you can press pretty hard because the friction, you're making heat, but don't. Don't go too much. You can you can warp or split a piece of resin or wood, especially a piece of thin wood. Okay. I'm gonna get another fresh, clean paper towel because we want to get all the the coarser grit off, so that we don't cross contaminate with our finer grit. Because then we'd be rubbing something that was too too coarse by comparison. All right, so there we are with the coarse grit. Looks pretty darn good. I'll take a picture of this out in the light today, out in the bright sunlight, and we should be able to see the good depth in it, and I'll post it in, in the groups and all. Group and on Spirecraft, Instagram. Again, I've got it stopped for the first layering of the microfine. The microfine is white. Got the, well, that lid's kind of worn out. It, it goes a long way. I got a place in Israel that bought like a dozen of each from me not that long ago, and there's some kind of production place in there. They need some more, so I got to get hooked up with them and get them some more. It only it takes forever to get it into Israel. Because everything is considered to possibly be a bomb, I guess, going in there. 
All right. Fired up. We'll go ahead and leave it at... And actually, I'm going to pop it back down to 500. Let me hit off here for a second and go to 500. Yep. And this will take it one step further. For years, I've used uh, a 3M product called uh, Perfect It on my wood, on my lacquers. And it's a three stage, three compounds, and three different foam pads that are different grit foam pads and on lacquer it gives a fantastic finish and I like lacquer because it's repairable okay we'll stop that and then I'm gonna turn our speed up that is looking smooth dust on my fingers Let's take her up to let's take her up to a thousand and buff it. And I'm actually going to switch it over to a clean section, but load it again. One more little dash. That wasn't enough. All right. And clean paper to polish. Give you an idea of where we're at. But I'm going to polish a little bit longer. And I'll take this off and hold it underneath the overhead um, so you can see. The other thing is I might be able to get the light to rake across it on the end camera as well. All right, I'm going to get one more clean paper towel. Buffer up real nice there. Now I'll try and clean my hands off. Because I'll get smudge prints on it with my hands. So there, you can see the kind of sheen and finish you got in the end camera. That gives you, when you do that right there, it gives you a pretty good idea. You can see, because I didn't spend all the time I needed to really sanding, you can kind of see, I mean, you got to be nitpicking, but you can see, because I was circular and I wasn't using uh, like a sander, you can see some of the, the swirl, the, the circular marks in it, but only if you get the light just right. And if we pop to the overhead, turn that one off. I'm zoomed in a little tight, but. Very pretty. And then what I'll do is I'll walk up to the front camera, which is on auto and uh, hold it up for you. So the back still needs to be finished up, as you can see how I, I did the edge. All right, so you can imagine that going on around. So let's see if we can walk up to the front camera here and not have it go crazy and get you a, a view of it. Try and get the light to hit it just right for you. 
Left is right and upside down. But, very cool. Like I say, I'll put it out in the sunshine and the sh sun will shine down in there. And that, that will be nice. All right, gang, how about it? So, you indeed can get dusty. Um, you can cast resin without a pressure pot, given a few provisions, like not having extra pieces in it, not making it a hybrid where you have wood in it. Um, going ahead and, and, and mixing your colors at about, a, like in this case, an hour out. I probably could have waited a little longer if I was going to have been around um, and had a little bit more delineation, but I'm really happy with the pattern that's in this. So I got no, I got no problem with that. Uh, the piece was small, it was thin or, or shallow, it wasn't really deep, which was to our advantage for casting without a pressure pot. Um, because you don't have the bubbles and the bubbles have enough time to go up through the resin, say with that hour's time still left of open time, um, when it's shallow. Now if it was that deep in a mold um, and you had air pocket bubble down in the bottom, you may not get it. You may find it in the middle of it when it's set up. So if you think about the project ahead of time and, and keep your project on the thinner side, doesn't matter how big, or big it is in diameter, that's irrelevant. Um, <coughs> just keep the thickness in mind. You can do a lot of resin stuff without ever having to have a pressure pot. A lot of the jewelry resin, or the art resin, the little stuff, uh, absolutely, you can do that uh, without a pressure pot. And with that saves the pressure pot, the compressor, the hoses, all that stuff. Um, so it is, it is quite possible to get nice pieces without a pressure pot. And again, this was epoxy resin, uh, not urethane. Urethane does most of the urethane set up real quick. The epoxies have a longer open time. Um, so that's it. That's where we are. I, I had fun making this. I hope you en enjoyed it. I hope you got some tips. And that way you can just get some resin and make some resin pieces without having to invest $300 in a pot and get a compressor and so on and so forth. Um, I think it's a good deal. I'm sure this is going into the house. My wife claims uh, these, and that's fine with me. Um, I, I'll sand up the backside uh, when I find my drill and finish it off. But uh, anyway, thank you for coming in today. Um, again, short, a little bit short, 2.20, about a half hour short from my usual two hours. But that's all good. Um, if you have any questions about the process or anything out of the supplies, uh, Info or contact or Bradley at Spirecraft.com will uh, get a hold of me and I'll be happy to help you with your questions. And if you need anything, just let me know. And enjoy your weekend. We'll be back next week. Pretty soon we'll be going to AAW like I, Rich and I were talking about, but that's not till the end of the month. But we'll, there will be probably two Thursdays at the end of May, 1st of June, uh, that I won't be here because I'll be up and on the road. But otherwise, I plan to be around. So I will do my best to cue the music and say thank you very much for attending. See you next week. Have a great weekend. I always think it's <coughs> and it is.